Rob, Rob tell on the track. Hop in the whip and I hit these switches. See that chrome suspension. Look at the car, you know who did it. I don't have to mention. They know it's Alex from Hoppos, 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 Hoppos. Custom work come from Hoppos, Hoppos, Hoppos. I'm, I'm Rob Taylor, 504. For anybody that gotta know, Alex stay with fresh content and he keep it coming like a slideshow. Never cut corners far as I know, but he cut metal with his eyes closed. Control arms, reinforced frame, still killing the game. You see the gun smoke from Impalas with the X frame, doing tricks like it came from the X game. Everybody gotta tune in for. What's up and good morning, guys? How are you? Excuse the no hat on and hair not done. It's raining, I figured. Oh well. We're actually on our way right now to go find the pot of gold. Right on the other side of that. Do you see that right there? Probably one of the brightest rainbows I've actually seen in a very, very long time. Pretty cool. Not my whole cup of tea, but pretty cool. Well, we're on our way to work. Let's get the door open up and head over there. Well, guys, this is seriously probably one of the brightest rainbows I've ever seen. I mean, you can see actually both sides of the arch. It's pretty cool. You don't really see too many of these because we don't get too much rain in California, but I know. The states that get a lot of rain, I'm pretty sure you guys are looking at me like, okay, it's a freaking rainbow. It's light refracting off of this. Yeah, I know, but it's still pretty cool. Well, guys, I'm just going to, instead of showing you my ugly face, I'm just going to show you these rainbows for now on. So we drive uh, down the canyon right here. We've got a little sprinkles going on, nothing too crazy. Um, but we are actually leaving the house a little early right now. And the reason for that is, well... I got to do a pickup for one. I got to pick up some parts uh, not too far from the location I'm at now. And then on top of that, well, I need to find baby formula. Um, well, you guys watched the last video. And well, let me say this. My baby or our baby, mine and my wife's baby, um, she is on a super weird formula. It's not really standard. It's kind of a, it's a hyperallergenic formula. She's actually lactose. So... We're having to, you know, give her something that's not ordinary so they don't normally stock too much of it. And on top of that, well, with everything going on right now, we almost can't get it at all. And well, back to my ugly face again. And well, like I said, with all this going on, we've been having a hard time finding it. And uh, I mean, we're not looking forward to hoard it. We don't need, you know, 7,500 cases on the side of our garage for it. But we actually just switched from breast milk to formula, like, less than a week ago and uh, well with that switch we had the, the breast milk you know stocked up and we didn't have the formula stocked up so right now um, I actually have like my whole family on a search for it and uh, looking we've been looking for it. I was able to find like one or two little cans here and there but the cans only last for two days and well with everything going on right now I feel like they've you know they just shut down San Francisco they locked that down the Vegas Strip is going on lockdown you know, it's only a matter of time for the cities over here to start hitting lockdown. It's kind of a monkey see, monkey do, in my opinion. So, and I know this is kind of a touchy subject. Guys are already getting mad last time because I was talking about it. I'm not saying that it's not, you know, uh, a health issue. It is definitely a health issue. I mean, that is the reason why we physically shut down our showroom to the general public. We understand the severity of it. But, in other words, the way I see it is it's more of a, it's a panic, you know. Um... People see that, you know, someone could go buy all the maple syrup out of the shelf and they're going to see, you know, see that and they're going to be like, you know what, I need maple syrup. No, you don't even like freaking waffles or pancakes, you know, you don't need maple syrup. But that's what everyone's doing right now. They're just panic buying and, well, it's just leading to everyone else panic buying because there is nothing on the shelf. So now they're freaking out. It's kind of like what's happening to us because if right now we do go into a lockdown, what's going to happen is... Our baby girl's not gonna have formula. And well, being that we have multiple things we can eat, she physically only has one thing she can eat right now, and a very specific thing on top of that, that's why we're searching for it. I wanna have at least a month's worth supply right now just to get by, but I'm just hoping we can get some cans right now. So I'm on my way to the store. I searched uh, four stores yesterday. I was only able to get two cans. Um, and again, those cans only last for two days, so that's only four days worth of formula. Uh, normally, the local Stater Brothers has them. They've been sold out. So, I'm going to be in line with all those idiots. Dang, I got that big old sunburn still on my forehead from the car show. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go stand in line with the rest of the idiots, uh, you know, fighting over baby syrup.
As you can tell, with the weather, it's been a little crazy around here. We don't normally get too much snow or rain around here, but uh, you see last night we got some snow locally by us. Uh, I say locally by me, I should say. Right there. We just picked up parts right now. Now we are headed back to the shop, which is great because they happen to open a little early and I was able to get the parts on time or earlier than I expected. So it means it gets to the shop earlier than expected, so it means more time to catch up on all the fab work. Uh, I know there's order, a few orders for 65 wishbones, uh, 58 to, or 59 to 64 wishbones, a lot of trailer arms you gotta do to catch up on inventory. So I know there's a lot to do today, so hopefully I can show you guys all that stuff, uh, what's going on. Hopefully I remember to film it, because a lot of times I get like halfway through and I'm like, shit, I forgot to film it. Pendufus, what happened? I pulled up right now and all the trash was on the floor. What happened? It fell on me. You don't fucking hear me. Oh, you know there's a the forklift right here. I know you use the forklift. You, there, there's a gas and a brake and, and slow. <laughs> Tankers. Yeah, tank. Hydra. 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 between all the rain we still haven't quite got to this car yet but what we have been working on is uh well this is a design we did probably about 10 years ago um it kind of just fell off we never really did anything with it now we're bringing it back um this is uh pretty much if you guys have ever had the issue with on a g-body where you break the upper ears being that they're casted into the rear end um what this does is this actually you could cut off the the ears that way you can still utilize your rear end you cut off the ears and this is going to be a bracket that adapts into your rear end and um, pretty much what this does here is it pushes back the the mounting of the actual trailing arms but it actually gives you a stronger surface to mount off of so you actually have a total of seven bolts holding this guy on um, this thing is fully welded all the way around and you could actually come up off the top off of for your brackets um, and again this is going to be kind of a universal uh, to fix your issue with the broken ears so you could actually uh, either build your upper control arms or extend them out if you have the the length on them and uh, you just make new brackets for the uppers here and you could actually still run your trailing arms hey Vic YouTube said don't drop this one like you did the last one They said don't drop it, that's all, I'm just repeating the message. They're ruthless on YouTube, huh? They're so mean to you. Just like you. <laughs> and well, we got the next project up real quick. It's a quick insert, it's a Bel Air logo. Uh, by customer's request and nothing in the center, just a trim. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we just cut this up and he's using it for an insert. He's using it for an insert for upholstery, so we gotta 
put some studs on there real quick so we can mount it and uh, pretty much get it shipped out. This one's going to be uh, done. Then we're going to move our way on to 65 wishbone again and then hopefully from there we can sneak in that beautiful 57 that's peeking through right there. And once again guys, the rain has continued. God, see, this is what I have to deal with every day. Hey, that's right. Go to your dungeon. See, guys, that's what I deal with every day with Vic. We just got a order come in, pile of little boxes. Um, I'm gonna have to close this door up because normally the w water comes in sideways because of the wind, and I don't want it to wet this car. So we're gonna have to close this up temporarily, shut down the back real quick. The good part though is the 65 wishbones cut, another one. Um, this is like a third one this week, and dang, it's really coming down. Holy crap. Luckily, I just put some new windshield wipers on because the ones I have are falling apart. I don't know if you guys can see it coming down sideways. I don't think so. I don't think it shows on camera, but it's really coming down sideways. Cylinders, cups, coils, telescopics out. Everything's still looking really good down here. Um, I just wiped up a little bit of the oil that was on there. Um, had to heat up some of the... Man, I just drew a blink. Had to heat up some of the Loctite because we Loctite all this stuff. Uh, but once we heated it up, it kind of came it came right off pretty easy. Um, so now with all this stuff, I got to get this on a smooth surface, wipe it all up, clean it all up. Um, and then we're going to rebuild these guys uh, with some poly packs and um, get these slapped back in there. And then we'll be pretty much on its way. So we're working on getting these cylinders in. Got this one all in. Uh, got it all tightened up. We just got to line it up in the top hole. This one, we just got it lined up. Uh, I'm doing the set screw right now to get it, this all tightened up. And we'll be on to the next step. Uh, and I'm doing this by myself. All right, guys, I know this angle's a little crappy here, but I'll show you guys a little, a little trip, tr trick that I've learned over the years. It's called a leg buster. You can jack up the jack we're using one leg line up your part with your other hand and film with the other it's called the thigh buster yeah that was awkward so we're on the second stage of uh, figuring all the issues out so it looks like someone got a little switch happy and uh, the back was a little overlocked no big deal, um, it's just a shaft seal, but the oil did come through the motor. Um, here is the motor, as you can tell, it's leaking out all the oil out of there. I gotta take, fully disassemble this guy right now, clean out with some electrical contact cleaner. Um, and I'll kinda show you guys how to do that as well as we go through. As we're outside, we're in a ventilated area right now. I'm gonna show you guys our really high-tech cleaning station for these motors. See, now this is world-class cleaning. Um, all right, guys, I'm just kidding. It's just a freaking piece of channel flipped upside down. I'm going to show you guys. We're just going to pull the motor apart real quick. Um, hopefully, I can do this with one hand. Uh, there's not too much oil in there. Oh. All right. And then now I'm going to make sure there's two washers on the motor end cap. So I'm going to make sure we uh, log that down in our brain. So remember how the placement goes. Um, you can see it's kind of wet in there. You can tell the motor's not really used that that much, um, but it is enough to you know get oil in there. So we're just gonna get this apart. Sorry guys, I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with me. And then you can see all the oil in here. Um, so we're gonna kind of just get out as much as we can, and then I'll show you guys what we use to clean out these motors. CRC. Electrical motive uh, Electronic parts cleaner and as you guys can see uh, Excuse my dirty greasy hands um, Non-flammable so you guys want to make sure you guys are getting non-flammable as you can see right there removes oil and dirt Degreases fast so this is the stuff that we like to use. Um, it doesn't have a residue or anything behind it uh, So I like using this I normally go through uh, so kind of so you guys know I'll normally say about a, a solid one can per 
per motor if it's you know bad this one's not too bad we'll probably use one can on it if the motor's really really saturated and has a lot of this black gunk everywhere i'm gonna probably say two of these cans um these cans are kind of like halfway so we'll see what we get out of it oh yeah 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 well i look like a big idiot because i'm telling you guys that this stuff's the best and the cans don't work and unfortunately i didn't have any other cans here so they're on order right now with the parts uh they're gonna be here in a second so in the meantime these pretty so oil guys gonna have to sit right there in the sun and sunbathe and enjoy this beautiful california corona free virus area and then we're gonna move our way on to the 57 and pull the pump out real quick so we can change that shaft, shaft seal Excuse me. <coughs> okay guys, so the funniest thing just happened right now. I mean, it, funny, but not really funny. It's one of those things where it's like, it's funny because I know I'm not sick, um, but the parts delivery guy came to the side right now. We got the CRC here, and well, as he came in, uh, they opened the side gate for him to come in, and as he's walking in, I'm sneezing, and the guy kind of stopped at the door, like frozen his tracks, and then she's like, he, he has allergies, I swear. <laughs> Oh, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, I, I'm not sick, but just saying, I always have natural allergies, so I sneeze all day. But it was really funny to actually kind of catch that on there. And well, we're back to the high tech cleaning station here. So we got the CRC, it's the same thing. Um, quick drying, plastic safe, you know, all that good stuff. And we're just gonna saturate and soak this guy. What you wanna do is get all the oil contaminants out. And you can tell I'm not being stingy with that's why I say at least two cans per motor. We'll probably just use one on this one. This one wasn't too, too bad. But you can kind of see the, the, the gunk just running out. And then we'll just leave it tilted over so all the stuff runs out. Hopefully this doesn't run downhill on me. Come on, baby, don't go. Ah. Stop. Sit. Stay. All right. There we go. Then we're gonna hit all here. And on this one, what you wanna hit is you wanna hit all, pretty much like all this stuff right here that could actually hold all the oil. Um, it's probably better if I, well, let me get this side first. All right, so that is clean. Flip this guy upside down. Ah, don't roll. Okay. Come on, man. Do for the YouTube. Stay there. So this is where this soaks in the most oil. Um, and this is normally what we see catching on fire. Um, so you want to get these really, really cleaned out. Um, you, I've known this for like personal experience. We've cleaned these. And what we do after is actually blow them out with uh, the air. Uh, like an air nozzle because these actually really hold a lot of oil so all right and i'll probably just do this one for fun all right so we'll let this sit here for a few minutes luckily the sun is coming out right now so it should dry it up quicker so let this sit we'll grab the air nozzle once you see most of this residue on here dry up that's kind of a good sign knowing that if it's dry in here it's gonna be dry in here um, and then from there what we'll do is get the air nozzle blow it all out and then just check it and wipe it all down make sure there's no more residue of oil in there that way we can save this motor save him a couple hundred bucks um, on top of that he has uh, you know the engraved stuff so now I'm going to get back onto the pump and fix the steel seal. Alright, so here is the pump. And well, you can see the shaft seal right there. Let me kind of, there you go. So we'll take this guy out, replace this one, clean, all up, clean it all up. I can't talk. Um, I'm going to replace this number 8 O-ring since we're already here. 
it's not worth chancing it for a dollar or two and uh, pull this guy out I do have a YouTube video on how to actually take this out if you guys need to so I'm not gonna really go in detail with this you guys should know how to do this if you guys don't know there is that video go ahead I'll go on there check it out um, I can also toss a link in there too possibly all right so we got everything back together we got the pump reassembled um, everything wiped up cleaned up we have it up on pressure right now and what we're doing is just wiping our hands through all the fittings making sure we don't get no uh, oil or some slippery residue uh, making sure there's no leaks on anything um, we didn't put the back board on uh, just because it's going back to California they're gonna be updating some stuff in the as far as stereo and system and stuff like that so we weren't gonna put the board back on save them some work um, so we should be good hopefully uh, we're gonna leave it like this for a few hours and make sure you get no leaks and we can continue on and uh, move on to the next project the man himself So guys, that is going to go ahead and wrap up the video for us. The 57 is now done. We're going to just leave it on pressure check, but everything's looking so good or good so far. Um, we just got off the phone with them. They're going to be scheduled to pick it up. So we're all set and ready to go. Now, I just want to say thank you guys for all the continued support throughout all this you know, craziness going on. Um, hands are all washed. Make sure you guys are doing the same. Make sure you guys are sanitizing. We also have disinfectant all standing by throughout the shop. Got some there. We got some more here. So we're doing our part to make sure everything's good. We're also keeping our doors closed to the public, uh, making sure everyone's staying safe. We are still shipping. Uh, we are, our website is still open, is fully active, and is actually, you know, got a whole bunch of orders coming through. So make sure you guys jump on it. If you guys get plan to be at home for a while, give yourself something to do, go in the garage, you know, stay safe, stay indoors, um, and work on the car, right? So head to our website, www.hopsonline.com. If you guys haven't already checked it out, make sure you guys check it out. Um, thank you guys for, again, all the continued support. Go on to our Instagram. If you haven't liked and shared, make sure you go ahead and do that. And uh, thanks, guys. We're out. Rob, Rob tell on the track. Uh, 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 Hop in the whip and I hit these switches. See that chrome suspension. Uh, Look at the car. You know who did it. I don't have to mention. Uh, uh, they know it's Alex from Hoppos, 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 Hoppos. Uh, uh, Custom work come from Hoppos, Hoppos, Hoppos. I'm, I'm Rob Taylor, 504. For anybody that gotta know, Alex stay with fresh content and he keep it coming like a slideshow. Never cut corners far as I know, but he cut metal with his eyes closed. Control lungs, reinforced frame, still killing the game. You see the gun smoke from Impalas with the X frame, doing tricks like it came from the X game. Everybody gotta tune in for the.